Hey there YouTubers, this is my Raspberry Pi high quality camera. We're going to talk about the process I went through from going from a single USB input for power and a single HDMI output for video data to using a single USB cable for both power input and video output. I'm actually swapping out the Raspberry Pi itself. I'm changing it from a Raspberry Pi Zero 1.3 to a Raspberry Pi Zero W. The Raspberry Pi Zero W has a wireless interface, so I'm able to connect remotely from a computer on my network. Just a reminder that the Pi Zero does actually require a ribbon cable adapter specifically for the Pi Zero, which is a little bit narrower. So this is my setup I use to update the Pi Zero. As the wireless network hasn't actually been set up on the Pi, I have to still do it this way for like one last time. Uh, I mean, I normally have a random USB keyboard knocking around as I sometimes find that my main keyboard isn't always supported. So let's go ahead and boot up the Raspberry Pi. You should see this sort of screen. Like I say, this is plugged into a monitor, so you'll see all the OKs, and you'll be presented by a login at the end of it. The login username is PI for Pi, and the password is Raspberry. These are default details if you haven't already changed them. And then we'll have access to the actual command interface. So we want to use the raspberry-config. This is the main config for the Raspberry Pi. This allows you to set up lots of hardware options. Sudo gives you admin access to any command. So we'll go ahead and enable the wireless connection. You need to set a location for the network. The SSID is your router or your home network's name. You can find this in your PC. If you go to your network settings, it will tell you which network you're currently on. But it'll be the same for any mobile device as well. You'll then want to enable SSH. This means that you can connect remotely from any other PC on your network to the Raspberry Pi. And if you haven't already, make sure you enable the camera. Go ahead and close all that down. The Raspberry Pi will turn off. It's the last time we need the HDMI output. So we can go ahead and take all the cables out. We'll only need the one cable now. For me, the USB cable plugged into the power only USB slot is now gonna be used for the power input and video data output. So we'll go ahead and swap that from the power to the USB port. I'm just gonna go ahead and tidy up everything. So this is technically what the Raspberry Pi will look like uh, from a physical point of view. There's no more actual like physical changes we can make. And as you can see, the green LED is lighting up, which means it's all powered on. That's a good first step. Now I can log into the Pi remotely via SSH with my PC. So I actually need to find the IP address for my Raspberry Pi first. I've logged onto my router and you can see the IP address here. And now if I open up uh, PowerShell or cmd.exe, or if you're on Mac, you'll use terminal, same for Linux. Go ahead and type in ssh space pi. Pi is the name of the account that you want to log into. At and then the IP address. And that's all you need to actually log in. It'll ask you to confirm a ssh key. Just go ahead and agree to that. Enter the password for the Raspberry Pi and you'll have access to the Raspberry Pi remotely. So now that we have access to the Raspberry Pi, we want to go ahead and install Git. This is an open source version control software. It uh, allows you to basically upload, download code. And it's, it's very popular, it's widely known. It's um, generally regarded as the, the main version control software to use. And we'll need to use Git to, to download a repository, which will give us all the UVC code that we'll need to get this project finished. Now that we've installed Git, we want to move to the directory where we can actually download the repository to. Go ahead and git clone repository to that directory. That will quickly download, move into the repository itself, and we'll see all the files that we have just downloaded. At this point, none of these files have actually been installed or run. See here, we've got pywebcam.service. This is the actual service that we want to be running to make our Raspberry Pi a gadget. So we want to copy this service to a system directory. This means that the Raspberry Pi will expect to run it on boot. Here we're enabling the Pi service. Now we need to make a couple of edits on the, the root loader. So in cmd line.txt, we need to add the last parameter that you see here, modules-load. 
equals dwc2 comma lib composite add that to the end of the file and we move on to the next one so we now move to config.txt and in here right at the bottom we see the line dt overlay equals dwc2 so add that in right at the bottom of the file and we're good to move on we can finally go back to the repository and build a code this is the final step for the code so once this is all done the software is ready to run so once the software is built we then have a couple of extra commands to run just so that the service is ready to function as soon as the Raspberry Pi is booted. So there we go. If you open up the device manager on your computer, you should see under cameras, UBC camera. This is your Raspberry Pi camera. If you look further down, you can see under imaging devices, we have a Logitech C920. So these will be kept separate, but they will both be on there. And we can go ahead and open up the Windows camera tool. This will show the camera working straight away we can see that it has got a low frame rate it was two frames per second but in my obs software i was able to set it as max frames which could up straight away and this is the final result quite happy with um how quickly that worked out i was worried that there would be some delay but actually i found there wasn't any and there we go we have a raspberry pi using a single cable for power and data I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, I had a couple of comments from my previous video where people were asking if I'd been able to achieve this. So I thought I'd make a step-by-step -step guide to help out and help answer those questions. Let me know in the comments if this has helped or if you've got any projects that you're working on yourself, I'd love to hear about them. And uh, other than that, please like and subscribe to the video. It makes a huge difference. Take care.